them, tried and them, tested them Shining from lessons, you can only make diamonds from pressure Since you put me on the Celestine prophecy Nothing here is stopping me Consciously or bodily, low energy don't bother me Love is my priority, so my vibrations 444 Sonically, my brain working out Meditation, my cardio, they hit it from us in the books You provided the audio Ah, Mental wealthness. Yeah. I got, I got a special guest with me here today, man. Michael Bonner. Introduce yourself, Mike. What's up, everybody? Uh, Michael Bonner. I am a uh, fourth and sixth grade teacher at the Ron Clark Academy. Um, business owner, CEO, um, a son, a brother. Um, just a black man out here trying to make magic happen. You I know love the vibes. It. I love it. I love it. You, you mentioned... You mentioned CEO. Tell, tell us a little bit about your business. Oh, so I am a, a keynote speaker. I speak to corporate events, education events, um, influencer who works with companies like 3M, Lego Education, whatever the case may be. Author, um, a, a, a couple other, <laughs> couple little side hustles and things going on. But um, it's, it's been fun. I've been enjoying it. Nice, nice. And you know, one thing, one thing recently, man. You know, with this mental wellness segment that we're doing on mm -hmm. Black Fly on the Wall Productions, is that we're tapping into business-minded individuals that are open to speaking about uh, their mental health mm -hmm. and also open to speaking about their business ventures. And I believe that um, they both fuse in between each other, yeah. right? Yeah. Because you can't, um, a lot of successful, successful men and women partake in business ventures and yeah. then a lot of, uh, every human being deals with mental health in some shape mm -hmm. or form, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one thing in particular I want to talk about that I love that I read about you on your website is mm -hmm. that you know, you travel around the country teaching teachers about self-care. Yeah. Right. So tap into that. Tell, tell us a little bit of, um, about that. I think it's critical, man. Th at this point in time, the world is going crazy. COVID-19 has transitioned from a that's pandemic a, a to an to endemic. It. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. So it's, we're living with this thing now. Uh -huh. The education system has already had its uh -huh. issues in regards to stress and what's been happening. So I'm just trying to make sure my platform, I'm giving back to actually encourage teachers to actually dive into self-care. Uh -huh. Truth be told, lot, the, the further you move from the classroom, the more money you make. Okay. Right. Right. So I know because of the platform I have, teachers know I get paid to come to their district or conference to speak. Mm -hmm. So I think the thing that separates my platform from everybody and which is why I established a foundation mm -hmm. is I try to give back to teachers to make sure they can get an access to a massage or I want to work with the traveling company, to try to give away a vacation because self-care is extremely important. Setting those boundaries is extremely important, especially when the society is very hostile like it is right now. Yeah. You know, I, I think what you said is critical. Um, and, you, and the main theme that you mentioned was partnership. Oh, for sure. Right. So whenever you're going, whenever you're getting, you're traveling around the country and you're helping, you're partnering with these different brands to support teachers. Mm -hmm. And I will say that uh, teachers are historically undervalued. Oh, for sure. And historically underpaid yeah. for uh, fostering the education for young uh, children in America. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, uh, what are some ways that you partnership uh, partner with brands to bring those uh, services? To, I mean, uh, so it can it can range from uh, you know working with Massage Jimmy to give out a couple massages to okay. teachers in a certain district. Okay. Um, it can work from I went to a school back at home. I didn't know they had a photo of me on this like this Hall of Fame type joint. Oh wow! Um, and that's dope because where that's we come dope. from, people they don't get out Absolutely. one and if they do make it out sometimes right. they come back right, right. so I just called them and I'm gonna work with the local pizza hut they throw this huge pizza party okay. so it's just doing things um, at the micro level to have a bigger to have and a better macro effect. yeah like a lot of people want to attack the big but you have to look at the little small details and what you can do on an everyday basis mm -hmm. so I think as long as I'm sowing those seeds back to teachers and, 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 and inside of education they'll establish the legacy that I really want to leave behind absolutely absolutely yeah. and you know um it's, and you know, it's, it's nothing particularly wrong with a teacher wanting to just teach, right? Sure. To being 100% devoted yeah. and to being a teacher. But mm -hmm. for yourself, you, you chose a route of wanting to uh, expand your horizons mm -hmm. as far as in, in growing wealth mm -hmm. and, um, and building your particular brand, right? Yeah. What motivated you to say, you know what? I don't want to just be in the classroom. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, travel around the country. I want mm -hmm. I'm good at speaking. You know, mm -hmm. you're tapping into your own talents that you've known, that yeah. you've known that you had. You know, what motivated you to uh, want to expand beyond the classroom? I think if I'd be 100 with you, I, I didn't know I was going to be doing what I'm doing now. Wow, okay. I mean, you, we met each other at Winston-Salem right. when I was hooping. I thought I was going to go to the, the NBA and, right. and be just like every right. other standard, you know, young black man that has that dream and goal. So I think it's something I sort of walked into, something I think God strategically put into my path because a lot of people know, and some may not, but I wanted to quit teaching. Mm, but teaching wow. is difficult, bro. The kids were throwing chairs, swinging at you, we got parents <laughs> cussing you out. Like, it's a lot going on in the education wow. system right now. So I was done. Wow. And I Around think what year was that? That was 2016. Okay. 2016, it was a really interesting year in my life. 
a, a lot of stress, a lot of turmoil that was going on personally and internally. And I remember during that year coming across my uh, Angela quote that said she would rather um, thrive than survive. And right. she wanted to do it with passion, okay. compassion, love, and joy. So that. at that point in time, I think I just walked into the speaking. I already had a gift of interacting and engaging people, um, but I didn't know about setting up a business or an LLC. That was a, a friend from back home who was a lawyer who was like, you need it. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about filing taxes or structuring an S Corp versus an LLC and estimated taxes. And we can schedule C, we can go down a whole entire list. Mm -hmm. It's just something I walked into. And I've learned that sometimes God will grace you to handle an assignment even if you're not prepared for it, Absolutely. if that makes sense. Absolutely. Even if you're not perfect, you already have certain intangibles in place that will help you be successful. Absolutely. So I think the product that people see now, you know, with the verified checks and all the success is cool, mm -hmm. but I'm just a product of the process, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, and I think that's, a, that's something critical for whether someone is young or mm -hmm. old listening to this particular interview is that, you know, you're made in the process, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the end goal looks amazing. The Instagram following looks mm -hmm. amazing. The, the viral videos, the TikToks and all those things look great. But an individual, what, you know, the, what the mud that you get on you going through the process oh, is sure. really what makes you into the person that you are. For sure. Yeah. I th and I think if, if people focus on that, that's where the greatness will come into place. At. I, I remember my first speech was in the gym. The gym is the worst place to speak in. It's 500 <laughs> teachers on both sides. In the middle of the Joker, bro, is the, the audio was crazy. I'm sure the people here would let you know. Yeah, right. I'm trying to get audio in the gym. Uh -huh. Bro, the only thing my mentors told me was to go and tell a story for an hour. I don't know how to tell a story for an hour. Boy, that's a long time to talk to. Right. Too. But getting thrown out there with wolves, right? And right. they'll transition from a crowd to a thousand to a crowd of 13,000. And you learn how to formulate your speech and learn how to engage mm -hmm. your people. Like, it's a beautiful thing about being in the process, but people quit in the process. Absolutely. So I think about now, if I would have quit teaching during that point in time, mm -hmm. I would not have no nowhere near the level of influence and stuff I have now. Absolutely. So I honor and respect that process. Absolutely. And people need to learn how to honor and respect the process. Yes. Because as you scaled, even back to the mental health piece, you're going to have to lean on the mental health piece even more. Because mm -hmm. the bigger you get, the more you're going to have to actually set those boundaries. LeBron has a $3 million budget for his physical health for a reason. $3 mm -hmm. million dollar budget for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because <laughs> it has I, to match the level he's at. That, that's, and that's something that I've always admired. And I've always mm -hmm. looked at, at LeBron as, a, as the one to, to show individuals that whenever you – uh, the rate of return of return on an investment in yourself is longevity, it's right? Powerful. And 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 one thing you said that was that was critical was um, you stated that you almost quit teaching in, in 2016. Mm -hmm. So what, what what how did that affect your mental health? Right, going into this oh profession gosh, and, and contemplating on on giving up. I was going through it at that point in time. In my six years of teaching at South Greenville Elementary, I think I had 14 different principals in six years of teaching. Wow. So don't even think about. Me think about the kids. If you had a child going there, right? Mm -hmm. They have fourteen different principles. You automatically know academically they're going to be behind everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, at that point in time, if you look on any social media, I love my family to the to the depth of me. I will stop and drop everything and go to war for them. So my mother ended up getting sick. Okay. And on that point in time, and you know I got married pretty early out of college, right. I initiated the uh, separation for the divorce. Mm -hmm. So all of that turmoil was going on internally. But that year, that process was mind blowing and transformative for me because I learned how to find myself. Mm -hmm. I learned to figure out what is Mike like. I, I've learned to figure out what uh, what triggers me, what doesn't trigger me. I learned to travel more out of the country. I learned to look at my skill set and begin to hone and figure out what can I build and what can I capitalize upon. Mm -hmm. So even though that year was tough, it, it truly was transformative to who I am today. Understood. Because you can't travel around the country in these various states where you don't know anybody on these stages right. with big people and these bigger conferences and companies mm -hmm. if you're not confident in who you are. Absolutely, you gotta be grounded. You have to be ground you got it. Did, did you did you go did you go to any therapy or anything like that during that process so i actually started therapy last year and okay. i've been enjoying the process and that's why i love this conversation too because i had to learn that your, your pastor isn't your therapist right your friends aren't even your therapist right. sometimes people will emotionally regurgitate on you about what they're going through mm -hmm. and not even taking into consideration where your friend may be in regards to mm -hmm. mental health um so i've been loving therapy i encourage all men specifically men because i know this is my camera Go to therapy. Right. Unpack those layers before you end up taking that baggage, not only to your next relationship, pass on to your kids mm -hmm. or pass on at your job. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I talk about my experiences with therapy a lot. You know, um, just going to therapy and in, uh, individually. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was, I had, a, I was able, blessed to actually have like a black um, psychologist, mm, me too, black male psychologist. Me too. Me too. And Shout and out he to was John. able to, he was able to resonate a lot mm -hmm. um, with where I was coming from. He was able to understand a lot of. Of, of, of the ways I was saying things, but sometimes mm -hmm. not able to explain them, mm -hmm. but understanding 
uh, how I felt because mm -hmm. he felt he's felt the same way mm -hmm. as an African American man yeah. in America, you know. And, and we have to be and, vulnerable with that too, absolutely. though. That's why even here, I've said this weekend to you a numerous amount of times. I'm proud of you and I respect you because a lot Thank of you. people glamour at the fruit of your labor mm -hmm. but they don't understand the process and the mental toll and the know. loneliness and the staying up late at night you know yeah. it's it's a lot that comes with that mm -hmm. so that's why i think therapy is extremely important because you can impact that yeah i mean because you know uh I, I believe i believe that doubt you know mm -hmm. doubt and fear is like a natural um a natural feeling whenever you're going through the process yeah. of trying to create something um trying to bet on yourself mm -hmm. uh that's a common saying but it's not that easy to bet on yourself, mm -hmm. especially if you haven't had much success mm -hmm. in a particular field or an area True. or area um, in the past. Right. True. So it takes a lot of guts and a lot of uh, a courage mm -hmm. to do that. So I always commend individuals whenever. That's why I said yesterday at the live show was like, look, if it's something that you want to do and you don't know how to do it, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just go after it. You will learn in mm -hmm. the process. Seek out information mm -hmm. from other individuals that may be even in the in the field of creativity. Right. right? So if you want to start a clothing brand, you may not have you may not need to go find somebody who started a brand who's yeah. who's failed with, with creating a brand, who's successfully created a brand. You'll be surprised how much creatives love to give. For sure. Um and, and love to give just simple feedback sure. on ways that you can grow, right? And with the with the age of information, you can literally Google it. During COVID, I was on YouTube the entire time mm -hmm. me too, man. Shut, I, you were too? I live on youtube listen me yeah. too. i have so many subscriptions mm -hmm. and business shut down so i couldn't travel so i was doing speeches virtually but even then i was trying to figure out a new skill mm -hmm. how can i learn something new because whenever when are we ever going to have another time where you have to be in the house in quarantine lockdown, yeah, lockdown. forcefully locked down so you, that's that's the thing about the pandemic is that it forced you to be um sent, either, either where you live by yourself it forced you to be alone mm -hmm. or if you live with your family it forced you to to be close to your family, but mm -hmm. I love the process of the pandemic because um, it, it, it forced you to have solitude. It made you look in the mirror too. Absolutely, and it forced you to look at life so simple, mm -hmm. right? It was a time where your health was the main priority. Right. So not work, yep. not going to brunch, yep. not traveling, mm -hmm. not all these things, and I think it did take a toll on individuals mm -hmm. uh, dr dramatically because they never spent time by themselves. Yeah. Like you have a lot of individuals that will say, you know what, I've never been to mm -hmm. dinner by myself. Yeah. Or I've never been to the movies by myself, yep. right? But the pandemic was the first time where you had to stay inside mm -hmm. and get on Netflix and, and watch a movie or mm -hmm. two movies or three movies a binge consistently mm -hmm. over months and months and months of time. Mm -hmm. And really the key to it all is grounding. For being sure. grounding. For sure. Right? Being grounded. You know, for, with this with this new segment, mental wealthness, mm -hmm. um, the the key takeaways that uh, we want to give listeners is you know what does it actually mean to be mentally wealthy mm -hmm. right so whenever you hear the the, the phrase mentally wealthy what mm -hmm. does that mean to you i think it'd be just as, as a simple analogy even from a teacher perspective um the same way you look at your savings account in the bank mm -hmm. <laughs> look at that in regards to peace and joy in your mind okay how many times can you withdraw from that account before you go bankrupt okay and i think it does fluctuate the mm -hmm. same way our own financial stability and stuff fluctuates at time um if you're taking care of your responsibilities so there's times for me when i've learned that my mental wealth <laughs> Uh, my wellness is is the account is running a little low mm -hmm. because I haven't been doing the proper maintenance on that. And I think I want people to fully understand that's where that's where the true happiness and stuff lies at anyway. When you're mentally wealthy, that's what really matters. I try to tell people all the time that money, fame, marriage or even relationship, this stuff is not going to make you happy. Absolutely. In fact, the reality of it is going to actually expose you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because it's just going to amplify how you are and how you really are at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So that's why you hear rappers, you know, Drake, Two Birds, One Stones, J. Cole talks about it in interviews, Kanye is vocal about mm -hmm. it, how that mental piece is a very important aspect as you try to build your business and as you try to continue to be a better person. So building that peace and joy is extremely important. And I found out it's easier for me when I lean on three categories. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think too, man, um, there's the old African proverb that says what's in is what's out, mm -hmm. right? And so whenever you're assessing your reality of what you're seeing and consistently in your life, whether it's financially, relationships, mm -hmm. careers, uh, relationships with your family members, right? Mm -hmm. You have to say, okay, what's going on inside of me is mm -hmm. reflecting in my reality. For sure. Right? And so I love what you said about um, looking at your mental health mm -hmm. as um, you saying when you look at your bank account yeah. because it's natural for us to run low mentally yeah and i think um what you i think that echoes on the point that you made earlier about showing yourself grace mm -hmm. um i think also um we have to show ourselves a lot of empathy right mm -hmm. because uh as especially as african americans like we've been marginalized mm -hmm. um we started off life in the negatives mm -hmm. 
right? Um, and 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 also I in think the basement, like in the basement. <laughs> I mean, very very yeah. very 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 low, yeah. right? And and so I think we have to give ourselves grace and understand that this is a soul healing process, For sure. Right? Life is living from the soul, mm-hmm. um, and you have to really really connect with yourself intrinsically mm-hmm. um, to realize that. Life is not about the things that you see. It's yeah. about how you feel. That's a fact. And and how and how you feel, um, extrinsically um, uh, uh, relates to the life that you live. Right. For sure. So we're we're w- the goal that we want to push here is that we want you to live a life of abundance. Yeah. We want you to live a life of freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, freedom from from thoughts or societal norms or the outside influences. Mm-hmm. But it's all about being strategically. Uh, grounded right yeah. and one way that I stay mentally wealthy is by just my meditation mm. um, it's something that I've really really honed in on over the last two years right. uh, this summer I'll be coming up on uh, two years of consistent mo- mo- meditation every single day yeah um, and Shout it's, out to you bro it's, yeah it's major it's, it's a major goal that I've set um, yeah, and I major. think uh, my uh, doing it with my fiance has, has helped me um, have a partner to go along with accountability partner um, it also puts pressure on you to be consistent in what you're doing because you also have somebody looking at you as an example yeah. of what should be done, right? And so um, I think that's that also should resonate. I think yesterday at the live show, mm-hmm. we talked a lot about um, doing things as a team. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, and so yeah. whenever you do, do do things as a team, you do a, have that built-in accountability right. partner with that. Do you, and that's why do I you think operate as a team? I, I have to. And that's right. why I want to say to the three points. For me, because honestly, this weekend, I would, mentally, I was running low. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're, me too. Man, I was on sensory overload listen, yesterday. So you were? Yes. So <laughs> I know for me, like people don't, when you are trying to scale and maintain, even if it's from your business makes 100K to your mm-hmm. business is grossing a million, when you're trying to continually get better, when you're trying to improve your product, it takes a toll. So I found out for me, when I'm off, I'm missing something in the three categories. Mm-hmm. So one, I feel like we are spiritual beings. Okay. If you're a Christian, right. Hinduism, whatever you're in, yeah, absolutely. that's important. The second piece, therapy. Mm-hmm. I think everybody needs that. And then the last one is the community. I mm-hmm. think if you lack in any of those particular three paradigms, your your mental wellness is going to be off a little bit. Your bank account isn't going to, isn't going to be as strong. So for me, I'm learning to tap back into those things. So this morning I got up, popped open my devotion, right? Got on right. my knees and prayed right. and try to recenter myself because I was off. Mm-hmm. And when you're off, it throws off everything around absolutely. you, especially when you have built something. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, man, this this, this has been a fruitful conversation, oh, man. For sure. Um, I, again, thank you, thank you for for pulling up on me. You already know uh, it. As we have this conversation uh, about mental wellness and, and and getting individuals to really hone into self, I think that's the the, the census and the foundation mm-hmm. of this conversation is 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 dig digging deep into your emotional mm-hmm. connections, um, dealing with your traumas. Mm-hmm. Um, assessing areas of improvement mm-hmm. for you um, and really, really uh, just doubling down on, okay, what is my uh, mental health bank account on? Facts. Right. I like, I like how you said that. I got to use that. But, hey, um, you, know, you know you can do it, brother. Absolutely, man. man. Mental wealth is, man. You already know mental it. Wealthy. Are you mentally wealthy? My guy. Good one. Good one. My guy. Was Oprah. You kick the vultures out the culture. It's La Costa Nostra. Costa Nostra. The timing is better. I'm tried and I'm tested. I'm shining from lessons. You can only make diamonds from pressure. Since you put me on the Celestine prophecy, nothing here is stopping me. Consciously or bodily, low energy don't bother me. Love is my priority. So my vibrations 444 sonically. My brain working out. Meditation, my cardio. They hit it from us in the books. You provided the audio. Audio.